Hello and welcome to the Saigon Times. I am Taike. Joining with us today, we have Mr. Ryan coming from Hawaii. So hello Ryan, can you introduce a little bit about yourself to the viewer of the Saigon Times? Yeah, sure. Uh, aloha everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan. I've been in uh, Saigon for six, about six years now. I came here originally to uh, teach English and about four years ago, um, we opened up a um, banbao shop uh, out in Tanbin and um, where we had uh, Vietnamese, Hawaiian, fuse, fusion kind of banbao mm. um, style. So we did that for a couple years. Um, but as you know, Corona kind of happened. We had to close up shop. And then um, me and my friend ended up getting into uh, smoking meats. Yeah. Um, so we continued that and I decided to put those smoked meats into a Japanese style uh, bento mm. rice box. So when you come here, is there anything that you find strength in this country and it's not happened in your country? Oh, uh, yeah, well, like kind of what everybody, when they first get here kind of thinks, uh, you get out the airport and then you see the roads and it's like, Whoa, just <laughs> motorbikes <laughs> everywhere. I mean, just craziness hap you know, happening. And uh, this is kind of like the biggest city that I've lived in. So, I mean, um, just the amount of people and the amount of like activity going on, restaurants, bars, um, yeah, a lot of stuff to do. Mm. Yeah. So how long have you been here? Uh, so I've been here about six years now. Wow, yeah. six years is a long time, right? Yeah. So is there any memories about the people here in Vietnam? Um, well, yeah, I mean, uh, people here are great and that's kind of what made me uh, want to stay for as long as I, I have had. Do you travel across the country already? Um, not, I haven't been to Hanoi yet. Mm. I've been to uh, Hue, Da Nang, um, and a lot down south, you know, Chavan. Uh, so where my partner's from. Uh, in the Mekong Delta? In the Mekong Delta, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, not to mention the, the food here is incredible. I mean, it's, there's a lot of different um, dishes. You know, back home, all we knew was uh, pho and uh, um, you know, maybe bun tin nung hmm. and the banh mi. That's about it. Um, but I get here and there's so much more than that. Hmm. I mean, I think my favorite Vietnamese dish right now would be uh, um dao mam tom. Wow. Yeah. Hey, talking about food, I know that you own a food store here in Ho Chi Minh City, right? I'm just kind of guy, a uh, guy that you know loves to cook, um, you know, and being so far away from home, there's a lot of dishes uh, that we you know can't get or that can't get in Vietnam. Um, so that's kind of what started me uh, recreating or trying to replicate the dishes from back home. So why did you decide to bring the flavor of Hawaii to Vietnam? You know, um, in Hawaii, food is an, a very important thing. It plays an important role with family gatherings, uh, friends and whatnot. That's how, that's how we um, share and connect um, with everyone. So I wanted to bring that same culture over here and share it with uh, Vietnamese people. Mm. Yeah. So Vietnam is very famous for fish sauce. Have you ever tried that? Um, yeah, actually, since there's a lot of uh, Filipinos back home, one of the you know, things that they use is uh, patis, which is uh, fish sauce. It's, it's slightly different, but it's used kind of in the same, same way. Yeah. So how do you balance the ingredients when you try to fuse the Vietnamese and Hawaii cuisine? Okay, um, yeah, when we're doing uh, fusion and whatnot, we try to keep everything or for example when we we're doing the bun bao you know we use the traditional uh bun bao recipe for the bread and then we use the um traditional hawaiian recipe for the filling mm. so i mean there's two authentic um i guess recipes going on the only, the innovation part comes from combining um the two so is there any challenges when you started the business here um, yeah, I mean, as far as um, cooking Vietnamese food go or goes or adapting to Vietnamese taste, mm -hmm. um, I was kind of unfamiliar with that. Um, luckily, I have a partner that kind of could, you know, teach me <laughs> um, uh, Vietnamese? Vietnamese, yeah, Vietnamese cooking techniques or Vietnamese recipes, you know, uh, how to use certain ingredients. Um, so I tried to incorporate 
you know, if I think it's going to fit and it matches the flavor, then I, you know, I'll try and experiment and use that. And if it works, mm. yeah, then we um, put it out. Mm -hmm. And you also get a feedback for your food from your partner as well, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. And um, try to get feedback from as many people as possible. So, you know, the neighbors and whatnot, you know, um, they let us know how their tastes are. You know, some of my foreign friends mm -hmm. too, they also can give me uh, feedback as well. Mm. So how do you make it more popular to the Vietnamese? Um, I would say like Hawaiian food or local Hawaiian food and Vietnamese food are pretty similar in taste. I know especially down south, people like kind of, a, you know, has a sweet tooth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, like Tet Ka, right? Um, uh, you know, use coconut water and, and a lot of sugar yes. and whatnot, right? So it's, it's similar to back home. Um, you know, we have this thing called shoyu pork which is basically the same thing. The only difference is instead of fish sauce based, it's more uh, shoyu based mm. or uh, soy sauce based. Mm. So uh, moving here in a new country, in a new city as well. So how do you get access to the ingredient sources? Okay, well, um, as far as the raw ingredients goes, Vietnam has pretty much everything that Hawaii does. Um, we have very similar, similar climates. It's, bo it's both uh, a tropical climate. Mm. So getting, having access to raw ingredients is no problem. It's, it's when I want to use um, specific, not really processed ingredients, um, well, like let's say a Japanese uh, style plum where they dry it uh, and cure it you know, in Japan. It's, it's very hard to get here. There are a couple shops, um, but- I think it's expensive, right? Yeah, yeah, like I said, yeah, it's limited and or it's uh, really expensive. Hmm. Um, so the Japanese plum, for example, you know, it's made with um, uh, the, the plum that we have in Vietnam. So instead of getting the already hmm. made one, uh, then I go and um, make it from scratch. Also, a lot of the pickles will be here too, um, daikon, um, kimchi, you know, cabbage for the kimchi, hmm. it's available here. Um, so we do everything from scratch. <laughs> do you think that is it a good thing when you live in a country who is really good at handling agriculture? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I feel like the Vietnamese are open to trying new foods and mm. you know really curious. So when we had that bun bao shop, um, I had this uh, bun bao bao khao. So I mean, people never seen beef stew in um, a steamed bun before. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we had a bunch of people wanting to just, yeah, just real curious and wanted to try that out. Yeah, and um, also too with the bento, um, I think Japanese food here is really popular. So mm -hmm. not only sushi, but you know, rice boxes mm -hmm. and whatnot. And when we add the uh, smoked meat, uh, then it kind of adds a, a different element Mm -hmm. So not your traditional Japanese food, but you have this uh, little smokiness um, mm. going on in there. So is that also the reason why you moved from uh, Ban Bao to the Bento? Um, I guess the reason why we kind of moved from Ban Bao to the Bento is I feel like the Bento um, gives me a lot more chance to experiment. Mm. With the with the bun bao, we had you know we had to pre-make the filling, um, let it go in the fridge, let it harden up for a day or so, and then make a whole batch. Mm. Whereas the bento, you know, I can try a uh, different style of meat, mm. you know, um, every day and mm. put that on our menu, no problem. Uh, can you tell us what is uh, the kind of food that you are so proud to talk about? Well, I guess our most popular one and the one um, I really enjoy cooking is our, just our Hawaiian smoked meat, mm. um, which is basically, um, uh, you know, pork, um, pork shoulder that's been marinated in a soy sauce, sugar, garlic, um, you know, marinade for two or three days and then um, smoked in the smoker for eh, about four or five hours. Um, so we, and then after that, 
to put it in a bento, we slice it up and fry it with some onions. Mm. So that's kind of how we'd eat it, you know, back home. Um, only this time I'm putting it or we're putting it in a bento. What do you think about the similarity and the differences between the Vietnamese and the Hawaii cuisines? I would say Vietnam and Hawaii is very similar in, in terms of food culture. So when we, like I said before, you know, mm. food plays an important role. Um, so when we go out with our friends, you know, we're not getting individual meals like, you know, a hamburger and eating that to ourselves. You know, we're ordering a bunch of different dishes and sharing, um, you know, uh, together as a group. Hmm. Um, so same like Vietnamese too. So, I mean, like I said, I think that helps in connecting people. Um, so I think that's the, you know, um, a key similarity, I mm. guess, between two different cultures. Um, I guess the differences would be that in Hawaii, you have a lot of different cultures that influence um, uh, particular dishes. So like I said, we had Filipinos, Koreans, Chinese, Japanese. Um, so there's a difference between local food and traditional Hawaiian food. And in a particular uh, local food, you can see in one dish, you know, maybe some Korean in there, some Japanese, mm. some Filipino. Mm. Um, and I guess that would be the, uh, uh, the biggest difference in that in local Hawaiian dishes, uh, there's a lot of different, um, I guess, cultures or cuisines smashed into like one dish. Mm. Whereas like a lot of Vietnamese dishes I see are, are you know, um, most of the time it's pretty traditional, I would say. Uh, in the future, do you have any plan? Um, no set plans as of right now, but then, um, you know, trying to get this uh, bento business up and running, um, possibly go back into or get the banbao business started up again. Mm. I mean, as far as the futures, no really set plans, um, just trying to get this uh, bento business and try to reach as many people as we can out there to, um, I mean, eventually, you know, like I said before, I kind of want to share Hawaii's food culture. So. Mm. Hopefully, put out some maybe uh, cooking tutorials. You know that way I can also practice my Vietnamese since I'm uh, studying that mm -hmm. <laughs> again. Um, but yeah, just um, you know, uh, trying to uh, share uh, Hawaiian food culture and Hawaiian f food uh, cuisine with as as many Vietnamese as possible. So, is there any kind of dishes in Vietnam that you find interesting? and you want to bring it back to Hawaii to extend your business uh, back there? Yeah, actually, um, there was one dish in particular that is pretty similar to something that we have back home. It's um, that kum chai kokuat. Oh. I don't know if I said that correctly, but um, yeah, that burnt rice with the, uh, the fish sauce or the kokuat. Um, Japanese have something similar back home where it's like a baked um, rice cracker. Um, but I just think it being fresh and, um, you know, you eat it with that, uh, you know, chili peppers and the uh, pork fat. I mean, I think, I think that's one dish that I actually prefer <laughs> mm. over uh, the Hoy's version of it. Mm. Yeah, so I definitely would take that back home. Um, and as far as cooking techniques, I think I'm going to incorporate steaming more into um, my cooking because not only it's healthier, um, I didn't realize, you know, how tasty um, something, f for example, like uh, steamed meat. So thank you for your coming with us today to the show, Ryan. Yeah, I'd like to thank you, Kelvin, uh, along with uh, Saigon Times.